Hello everyone and welcome to my show. I'm your girl, Melody Trice, and I'm all about living life unlimited. Well, my guest truly is living life unlimited. So I want you guys to stay tuned because I want you to be inspired and motivated to be your own entrepreneur, okay? And be able to give back to your community. So we'll be right back after this break. Hello everyone and welcome back. Well, my next guest truly is Living Life Unlimited. She not only giving back to her community, but she is an entrepreneur as well. So help me welcome Mona Lisa Okoji to the show. Come on down. You look amazing. Thank you. So nice to see you, Melody. Good to have you. Well, you know, one of the things I feel so privileged because we have a princess here on the set today. So being here today, and I mean just the fact of you giving back and doing so many things for your community, what did that mean to you to just have that ability to do that? It means a lot to me because growing up from a privileged background, I also was brought up in a very strict home and we were taught to do all our chores ourselves even wow. though we had people to do them for us. And my mom instilled in us the, that we should also give back to the community. Wow, and I know, I mean, I love the fact that you have your own jewelry collection. I mean, what inspired you to say, okay, I wanna do my own thing? Actually, it's my love for jewelry, truly, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> I just um, found myself one day designing pieces that I wanted for myself, and I'll take it to downtown LA, and I'll have a goldsmith put it together for me. Wow. And then when I go out to friends and family, we go like, where did you get that from? I want one. I'm like, I did it myself. And that's how my passion evolved into a jewelry business. Wow. So how long have you been here in America? 21 years. Wow. How often do you go back? Five times a year. Wow. That's great. Yes. Because technically you're still kind of involved, right? Yes. So tell us about it. Um, I know the fact that you give back to a lot of the young girls over there. So what brought about that? Um, after volunteering here for about nine years, I walked, I volunteered for the, I volunteered for the Genesis Center and then Malaria for Africa, Kick It for Kenya. I felt that everything they were doing was good, giving clothes, shoes, medication, but I also felt a void. And I figured that if you educate these women and children, then they can buy their own medication, they can buy their own clothes, because clothes get torn, they fade out, but the education stays forever. Wow. So that's what inspired me to start Upward African Woman. Wow, because you know, knowledge is power. Yes, it is. Right, because if you constantly having to have someone give to you, then you'll never be able to be independent. True. Wow, so tell us a little bit about Upper African Woman. I mean, I think that's a great organization. Thank you. Um, Upward African Woman, what we do is educate women and children in Africa. We also um, work with Compton Early College here in Los Angeles. We mentor kids there by encouraging them to go to colleges because some of them are first generation kids to go to high school. And they feel that they don't need to pursue the education. Many of them want to be bank managers or 
managers as fast food restaurants, and there's nothing wrong with that. But if you have an opportunity to go to a higher education, why don't you take advantage of it? So we encourage them to get higher education. And then we also feed the homeless in Los Angeles. So we are there every Thanksgiving, 7 a.m. in the morning, giving wow. them hot food to eat and um, having conversations with them. Wow. So when you go back to Africa yeah. and you talk to these young girls and young women and educating them, how do they perceive that, the fact that you're not actually living there now, but you do go back? So how do they perceive the fact they see you and the princes and all this stuff and the fact that they're going to learn? Um, they actually receive me and my team very well. They're happy that somebody actually cares about them. Everything in life is all about love. Yes. So they see the love, they see the concern, they see the care, so they get really excited. Every time we go, we have a ball with them. Mm -hmm. They all have different stories they want to tell us, and mostly they just want to tell us thank you oh. for believing in me. Wow, have, they, have any of them ever had an opportunity to come to America? No, not no, yet. Not yet. But we will, we will like to bring one or two of them for our next event. Wow. Because I know when I watch different programs and, and different things, I want to just grab them and say, hey, you know, come in so that you can live free and, and do more. Because I really never knew that it was so limited in other countries like that. It is. I mean, here in the U.S., you have pretty much everything. There are so many people all over the world that don't have food. They don't even have clean water. Wow. You know, yeah, there are a lot of horrible stories. And those you know. stories are real, huh? Oh, very real. When I'm with them, they're crying and I'm crying. So it gets very emotional because some of their stories, I mean, are unbelievable. Wow. Well, look, we definitely want to talk some more because I'm intrigued to really know a little bit, especially about your, your business and the fact that, you know, you have a new line coming out. And yeah. um, I want everybody to be able to, you know, find out more information. So you guys stay tuned after this break. We'll be right back. Hey, Bobo, do trees tell each other stories? I'm sorry. I'm afraid I don't know that. Hey, why don't we go find out? Listen. Do clouds take naps? I couldn't tell you. Dad, do stars visit their friends? Look! One in three adults has prediabetes. Take the risk test at doihaveprediabetes.org. Hello, everyone, and welcome back. We are here with Mona Lisa Okoji to the show. I am so excited. I mean, to just hear your story, and I know you don't like me to mention the fact that you are a princess, <laughs> a real princess, you guys, right? I mean, I just think that's amazing. I mean, how do you handle that? I mean, because you're pretty shy about it, but I got to bring it out. <laughs> so what did that mean to you just to be a part of the family? Um... It actually means a lot to me, but everywhere I go in the world, nobody knows because I don't talk about it. But when I, when I go to where I'm from, Edo State in Nigeria, then everybody calls me princess. Um, my dad died three years ago, and a friend of mine, thank you, went with me from LA, and I kept telling her, you know what, only a princess can get into the palace, talk to the king. And she was like, oh, please. We, have, we came from early together, we're gonna go. And she got there, they didn't allow her in. Wow. I had to go take permission for her to come in. And then she was like, wow. <laughs> <laughs> she said, I thought you were joking. I said, no, mm. I wasn't. Wow. <laughs> yeah, so when I'm there, then they recognize me as a princess. Wow, that's amazing because, I mean, you know, you hear those stories and then to be able to be in the presence of one and to see them, I guess, in their royalty, 
you know, giving back and doing what it is they love to do. And I know the fact that you also started a new jewelry line out yeah. that's coming out. And I mean, I'm excited about this jewelry line. Tell us about that. Okay, so the new Nehita jewelry line, it's going to be a secret, so I can't tell you about it. I thought we did. But, but. I thought we did scoop of it. Oh, my God. Yeah. I'm not going to spill it out here, but <laughs> watch out the first quarter. It's going to be a line for everybody. Everybody will be able to afford the line. Right now, everything is all high end, but the next line is going to be affordable. Affordable. Yes. Okay. See, we thought we was going to get the scoop, you guys. <laughs> next time, right? Next time. Okay. <laughs> well, you know, I think that's amazing, though, the fact that you are making it where everybody can actually be a part of your collection. Yeah. And um, so with doing that, anything else that you're looking to do in the upcoming year? Um, like I mentioned earlier, we're looking to bring at least one or two girls from Ghana to our next event in October of 2019. And then we're also looking to own a school in Nigeria. Oh, wow. That's amazing. Thank you. Because, you know, the education over there, how do they actually, like, educate the teachers in order for them to educate the students? Like, when I grew up, everything was literally perfect we had foreign teachers i went to a catholic private school we had nuns that were teaching us but things have changed over the years mm -hmm. and um, the education system is way below the average right now so for you to get a good education you have to go to a private school now in a country of 196 million people how many people can afford private schools Wow. So that leaves the underprivileged as a disadvantage. So that's where we come in mm. to take care of those people and give them very good education so that they can compete with other people. Yeah, because if, if they don't have that education and then they you know, can't afford it, it kind of limit them to what they can do for yes. their life. True, true. Wow. So, I mean, do you have family still there that comes here to visit sometimes? Yes. All my siblings are there. I'm the only one here. Really? Yep. Yep. How do they feel about the fact that you have <laughs> left the nest, honey? <laughs> <laughs> they enjoy the fact that they can always come here, say hello to me, and then go back. So they technically have a home here oh, with yeah. me. But uh, other than that, they're like, okay, bye. We're going back home. <laughs> Yeah, because, you know, you get homesick, even though you like the mm -hmm. fact of the liberty to do other things. But when you go back to your own country, it's like, oh, yeah, this is perfect. Yes. Well, yes. so um, before you leave, what encouraging words would you say to other entrepreneurs out there to really give back to a charity that's going to really make those kids or p people unlimited? Um, one thing I found out is that um, a lot of people think you need to actually give a lot of money. But um, I tell people all the time, you can give a dollar. It has a ripple effect on so many people. It makes a difference in one person's life, and then that person will try to make a difference in another person's life. Mm -hmm. So I would just like to tell people to give back. If you don't have money, that's fine. Give your time volunteer just help the next person love your neighbors yeah that's what i'll tell them wow that's amazing well i want everyone to stay following you on your social media and go to your website right so that they could be able to look at your collection so can you let them know so my website is nehita.com and my facebook is the same thing so all my social media handles are nehita jewelry or nehita.com awesome well, you guys, I appreciate it so much. You stay tuned. I thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you. And you guys, we'll be right back with some more because we are truly living life unlimited. Oh, my God. That's Hey, Bobo.
each other's stories? I'm sorry. I'm afraid I don't know that. Hey, why don't we go find out? Listen. Do clouds take naps? I couldn't tell you. Dad, do stars visit their friends? Look! Hello, everybody, and welcome back. I am super excited because my next guest, he is Living Life Unlimited. He's a phenomenal actor. So let's welcome John Paul Burkhart to the show. Come on down. Yay. How you doing? I'm doing really well. How are you doing today? I'm doing phenomenal. Well, that's good. You look amazing. Thanks. You look great. Too. I mean, you know, I just just intrigued by the hair and the, everything about you right by now. <laughs> well, I just I just shower and it just dries curly. Always has. Well, look, one of the things, I am so impressed about your IMDb. Like, you have really been busy over your life. Yeah. I mean, it really appears that way. The, the jobs, for me, seem, a, there's a little distance between them. But, yeah, when you look at them as a list, it's, it's impressive. Yeah. Like, you have really <laughs> took, you know, your career seriously. And, I mean, you know, of course, it is show business, right? Yeah. So, really, what inspired you to say, I want to act? Oh gosh, I um, I always sang. Like I was always a singer as a little kid. My dad was a singer in church and he roped me into it and we used to sing together wow. when I was a little kid and get up on Sunday morning and sing. And then um, I just always sang. And then when I wow. got older, I, I started singing more seriously and I ended up studying opera in college. Wow. I know, but I was doing musicals because you know I, I wanted to sing. And so I got interested in acting and then in college, I changed my major from opera to theater. My dad was so upset. <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, no. and then uh, I, I really got interested in the acting, and I realized like, I, being a musician and singing was really just a part of, I think, that. Like, yeah. as, you, know, you know, I'm sure yeah. like, as we get older, we, we find out more and more about ourselves, and we're like, oh, no, I'm acting. Oh, oh, no. Oh, oh, no. Yeah. yeah. So. <laughs> and technically, you are unlimited. Like, yeah. you're not stuck in one area. Like, you technically can do whatever you want to do. And when you said that you went to school f for opera and singing and doing theater, that's a part of acting. Yeah. And it's like, yeah. oh, my God, where well, you came alive. Yeah. Wow, that's awesome. And I can totally see the theater, though. Like, I could, you know, you, it's something about people who do theater that just have this distinct look about them. Theatrical. Yeah. Bigger, yeah. So, you know, being in the entertainment industry, I mean, I see so much happening with it. What really keeps you grounded and focused so that you can stay yeah. living the life that you want to live? Grounded. Hmm. Um, I don't know. I mean, I... I I work a lot, and and honestly, I have a I have a really good therapist, <laughs> and yeah, I think that's important. That makes a lot of difference. Well, honestly, I mean, we we take care of our we take care of our bodies. Whenever we get sick, we go to the doctor, and like we if we get a cold, we rest. But like, you know, our brains get exhausted too. We yes. have so especially today, we have so much. What with social media, and and there's so much going on. It's wow. important to keep this in check too, that's and true. and I I do. Um, but more than Me that, too. I have I have a big group of friends who are just well. Actually, it's getting smaller as I get older. But I have a wonderful group of friends who are very supportive, and we all kind of work in the same industry or around it, so we're able to support each other. And yeah. and I also I, I have a lot of artistic friends who who do the same thing or s something similar to me, and we we keep each other accountable for you know the the stuff that is important to us. And that projects. matters. That yeah. matters. Because w one of the key things you said was your surroundings. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. being around people who are like-minded so that it keeps you motivated to do what you need to do, you know. And uh, for me, I would say, like, uh, when I have that therapy or, or have a therapist talk to me is when, I, when I'm, I'm at church. I can't lie. It's like, you know, like my pastor is ministering to me and able to unfold. And a lot of times when you're on that acting stage, you become somebody else. And if you don't get back to where you're supposed to be, mm -hmm. you can really like lose that person. Mm -hmm. So and you said about social media. Mm -hmm. I mean, how valuable has social media been for your career? And the fact that it has changed. Social mm -hmm. media is almost like it's your resume. Yeah, it's. 
I mean, I'm uh, I'm 41, and social media, I really had to embrace it because I kind of like a, a lot of my younger friends. They are really into it, and they have really been just you know building their following and all this <laughs> stuff. And I have finally like started to, but I I feel like I finally have a more of a reason to with you know more stuff coming out, movies coming out, and I feel like I can actually say okay. Okay, I, I put more stuff out in the world, so if if you want to be interested in me, this is a good time to do it. <laughs> okay, because I got this is a good time to make an interest because stuff. Wow, I mean, because it's so valuable. I mean, you know, social media actually give you the opportunity to to actually send a clip to somebody who obviously probably wouldn't have seen it before. It is, yeah. You know, it, it gives you a lot. Uh, I've really embraced it in the past, I don't know, six or seven months, and uh, we've built an audience for our film on social media, wow. which is great through Instagram and through Twitter, and it's, yeah, we're actually, we're building a PR campaign uh, for a couple of new projects, and we are only using social media. Wow, well look, we want to talk about that when we come back. So yeah. you guys stay tuned, because after this break, we want to hear about this new project we've got going on. We'll be right back. One in three adults has prediabetes. Take the risk test at doihaveprediabetes.org. Hello, everyone, and welcome back. We're here with actor John Paul. I am so excited to just talk about this new project that you have going on. Because you sent me a trailer, and I'm, I mean, we're going to watch that in a minute, but okay. tell me about it. Well, it is a uh, it is called Sick for Toys, and it's a horror Christmas thriller. Wow, I love horror movies. Oh, you do? I do. Oh. I'm, a, I'm a horror fan. What's your favorite? Do you have oh, a you favorite? know, I'm I'm seriously, I am like Jason and Freddy Krueger. I know it's old, but the other ones okay. kind of deal with the mind. So I like I like the old school way. I'm sorry. I'm a huge Nightmare on Elm Street fan. Oh, I, I love God. Friday the Thirteenth, but like I guess when it was time to pick, I just chose Freddy the Glove. Yeah, I love cool. Freddy. You know, and, and it yeah. was like. Yeah, and I used to like watch it in the dark, so I'm with you, brother. I'm like with you right there. 80s, 90s. Okay, so what, you know, with your new movie you have, what inspired you to really go to horror? Uh, well, I've always, I've always loved horror. I, I was born on Halloween, actually. So really? Like, yeah, so it's just kind of like in my DNA, I guess. <laughs> but like, oh, that's scary to say, I guess. <laughs> it's okay, it's okay. But no, I... Uh, it, it was honestly an accident. We were we were funding another film at the time, and uh, we met the writer Justin Xavier. And the script fell in our lap, and we loved it. And we thought, well, we've already raised X amount of money. We can shoot this film for the money that we have. So let's do that. Wow. Because we were just we wanted to make a feature film. We wanted to jump into that business, and yeah. so we did. And uh, I, I'm very proud of the work that we. Wow. That went into that project because it was it was a lot. We wow. all did five, six, seven jobs. <laughs> wow, that's amazing. Well, teamwork made the dream work. Oh. I want us to take a look at that clip right now. Okay, let's do it. Let's take a look, you guys. I've always been interested in medicine. It fascinated me that we could be sick and then take a pill and start to get better. But there were things outside of our bodies that we could put into our bodies that would start to fix us. And I began to wonder. What else I could fix about myself, about Amelia, about everyone. So I began reading. I learned about a lot of different medications mm -hmm. for all sorts of things, things you never thought a drug could be used for. Like what? Well, they're the basics. Acetaminophen, diazepam, loperidol, stopping a fever, pain relief, mental illness. There's erectile dysfunction, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> then there's the really fascinating stuff. I mean, I never knew that you could take a pill that would change the way you see the world. Steroids, opiates, hallucinogens. There are drugs that make it so you can't feel pain. Drugs that make you forget. Drugs that make you tired. So now Edward works with medicine. You start taking medicine after that? Every day. 
How old were you when this happened? She was 12, I was 17. Seems awfully young to be taking medication. Well, we both turned out okay. Yeah. You two seem really normal. Boy, I mean, you actually took on another hat, right? I did, a few. You know, <laughs> so what did that feel like to actually not only act, but also be, you know, a part of making this? Um, I, well, I was the, I worked as the executive producer and the line producer, and so I was in charge of pretty much the day-to-day -day of, of everything. And um, it was a lot of fun, but I have a very good partner, uh, David Gunning. Uh, we 50-50, we do everything together. Mm -hmm. And um, so I did have a partner. You, you always need a, a collaboration. Collaboration yes. is key. Collaboration. Teamwork, teamwork definitely. Yes. But uh, when I was just producing, when I was running around, you know, signing checks and driving vans and doing everything that I was doing, I loved doing that, and that's all I wanted to do. Wow. So when I was producing, that's all I wanted to do. But when I was acting, when I was just acting, that's all I wanted to do. I was like, no, I love this the most. <laughs> so I, it was it was hard to decide. Like if I if I had to choose, I don't I don't know what I would choose, because wow. it's 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 I guess being the art versus creating the art. Like putting as a producer, like I get to hire all the artists. I get to interview these artists that that, that build the most amazing things, and I get mm. to put them with these you know directors, and then they get to create a, a scene, and and then the the cinematographer, the photographer gets to, it's just, it's so much fun wow. putting all these people together. Oh, so I love it. That's the beauty it. of it. Yeah. I mean, to just <laughs> put it all together and then when someone watches it, they like, wow. Look, I definitely want everyone to know some of the projects you're working on. So could you let them know? Because I don't want to leave without them knowing what's happening with you. Well, it's going to be an interesting, interesting surprise. <laughs> um, but it's funny, it's timely, it's going to make people laugh. People are going to love it, hate it. It'll be fun. We're shooting that in March. And you can follow everything that we're doing at 910 Films uh, on Instagram and at Sick for Toys on Instagram. And then me at the John Paul. And I'm a J O N. My, my mom likes to say that they Joan. beat the H out of me. Because mm. it's not J O H N. It's not Joan? <laughs> Jean. No, Jean. it's not Joan. It's John. No, I'm from Texas. It's just John Paul. Oh, John Paul. John Paul, <laughs> John Paul you guys. John Paul. Well, look, I appreciate you so much, and thank I you so much you. for being on the show. Um, I want everybody to make sure they stay following him on his social media. Follow all my guests on their social media, because we really do believe life is unlimited. And don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel, and we're now on Roku TV, Melody Trice Television, and Amazon, right? So we are truly living life unlimited. Till next time, you guys, I'm your girl, Melody Trice. Bye.